Hey everybody, welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker Shop update for April 14th, 2017. I'm Shannon Rogers and here's what's happening in my shop this week. I finally got around to making a long tool rest for my lathe. This is one of the things that uh, you'll find a lot of chair makers use. Anytime you're working with long spindles like legs, having a continuous tool rest allows you to really shape nice long tapers and gentle curves. The worst thing is when you're trying to shape something and you run to the end of your tool rest. Certainly having to stop and reposition the tool rest is something, but you'll find that this gets really difficult in shaping a consistent curve or a consistent taper. Inevitably you end up with that little hiccup where you had to stop and move the tool rest and start over. And then you have to go back and spend time blending it. Having one consistent tool rest allows you to make those nice long planing cuts with a skew and get perfectly flowing curves, perfectly straight cylinders, perfectly tapered legs, etc. This is a real simple project to make. I'm kind of kicking myself for putting it off so long to make it. To make this tool rest, you basically need to make a trip to Home Depot. I used some one inch by one inch, eighth inch thick angle iron. And all I could do was find it in 36 inch lengths. And I used some steel rod. Now the steel rod matches the banjos that are already on my barn's lathe. So if you're trying to match a banjo, you need to capture the inside di diameter of your banjo. Uh, these happen to be uh, Allen screw head 3 8 inch by one inch long bolts for uh, threading the whole thing together. If I were to do this again, I would probably go with a shorter bolt. These one inch bolts are just entirely unnecessary and it, yielded way too much drilling and tapping of steel. I sawed my angle iron to 24 inches long. It's a good length. It's rare that you're gonna run into a spindle for furniture that's gonna be much longer than that. Once I had sawn it to length, I used a file to clean up the edge so it wasn't sharp. And then I used a file on the top edge of what will be the tool rest to smooth it out and polish it so that's nice and slippery. I want my tools to slide over this. Then it ended up waxing the whole thing with some Renaissance wax, certainly to prevent rust, but also to give it just that little bit slicker uh, feel so the skew chisels and roughing gouges and stuff would just slide right over it. I took the angle iron over to my post drill and I drilled two 3 8 inch holes through it. No big deal here, just crank away until the hole breaks through. Now over to the posts. I took my 7th eighth inch rod and I cut it into four inch lengths. Now I've got enough here, I've got a third post. Maybe I'll end up making another specialized single post tool rest in the future. So I'll set that aside for when I need it in the future. Then I took those posts over to my post drill and I drilled five 16 inch diameter holes, one and a quarter inch deep. And this is why I say I would probably do better getting a shorter bolt because it's a lot of boring in steel here. Then I took that rod over to my sharpening station and I tapped that. I used a 3 8 by 16 inch, uh, 16 TPI tap to tap the length of that hole. And again, like I said, a shorter bolt would make this a lot quicker instead of having to tap basically the full length of the tap here. If I had made that bolt any longer, I wouldn't have had a long enough tap to do it. Then I just thread it all together. I added one of these uh, lock washers between the head of the bolt and the angle iron may or may not be necessary, but I figured since there may be excess vibration on the lathe, it might be good just to keep everything cinched up tight. Now with everything screwed up tight, nice and firm, I'll bring it over to the lathe. So I loosen these up and this Barnes lathe actually came with two of these banjo assemblies. I moved the factory tool rest out of the way and slot these in. And we'll set it there. I've got a nice 24 inch long tool rest here. Nice polished top so the tools will slide along it really easily. Now it's fortunate that I have the twin banjo assembly here. If you don't have that, you can actually buy just the banjo assembly from a lot of parts uh, retailers and aftermarket retailers, or you can make one yourself. Some of you may know I've built multiple lathes out of wood and I built a similar uh, banjo assembly. I just modeled it after one of these where I built up a block of wood, drilled out a hole and inlaid a steel pipe with an internal diameter that matches the diameter of, of the post by choosing. 
and you can thread the wood, thread the pipe, do the exact same setup that I have here. So it's always possible to make a new banjo assembly. In this particular instance, I had two, so why not embrace that? So there we go, quick night in the shop and I created myself an extremely useful tool rest that frankly I've been meaning to make for like five or six years. That's it for me this week, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next week.